Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel we have James 4 7. And it says, Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Just trying to keep things going in the right path. Right now, it's it's doing really good, knock on wood, whatever. Um, praise God. And so, um, things are going all right. Uh, okay, so, I do have a couple of things for you. Um, some things that I'm super proud of. Um, and, I don't know. Okay, I'm just going to do it backwards because that's where my pot is. <laughs> so, I played in the dye pots. And I didn't end up using the Targi for that shawl. Remember, I wasn't sure if I had enough yardage for that shawl with the um, Tunis and Crosstown mix. And so I ended up making some yarn, making some yarn. I spun it up and then I dyed it. This is actually a really dark mauve color. Um, I know it looks more brown, but it's not. Uh, um, almost an eggplant color. And then, of course, it goes lighter to the... And I just dyed this one skein. I don't know what I'm going to make with it yet. Um, it's got 240 yards, I think. Oh, I have my paper right here. I could look. Duh. Um, but this is the Targi, and it made, yeah, 240 yards. So I'm honestly thinking a scarf, you know, around my neck. Um, I actually have a job where I can go to wearing my shawls and my scarves and they're not going to be tore up, which is a good thing. I wear my ponchos. Just waiting for fall to get here. Anyway, so then I also dyed the shawl. Now, if you remember, this is my first article of clothing to dye. And I had in mind, I wanted to make it look like it just kind of fades to white with the blue. I did it kind of, sort of. Um, so, and you really can see there is blue in there. And, and the thing is, is it's dark. Wait till you get This is that, and then it's not as green. It is actually blue, and it fades to white. I think I did okay. Not bad for a first time dyeing an article of clothing. I normally dye the yarn and then let it work up. I wanted a certain look with this, and I love it. Um, you can tell I've blocked it now. I took a lot of pictures before I blocked it, but I have blocked it. It's beautiful. Again, just waiting for winter so I can wear it. Um, I've got to, got to get some decent shawl pins um, before I just, you know, stuck whatever on there. Um, I've got a brooch, a cat brooch that I think would look cute. Um, I'm not really into cats, but it was my grandmother's. It's got a big crystal in it and stuff. And so when she passed away, I got that. And I was thinking it would, you know, if I just take this and put it around like so, and then just kind of offset it and just bring this across. So it would be cute. Um, don't know yet. We'll see. But worst case scenario, I'll be having it over my shoulders at work um, when it's cold because I am the front desk by the front door. So, uh, yeah. All right. Then I did start another shawl. And these are the ones that I always give away. They're what I call my mindless knits. And it's working up like this. So. Yeah, and it's just this one right here. I haven't really gotten very far on it uh, because I have been working on something else. And so the kit that I got from Mary Maxim um, had eight of these in it. And it had a really pretty snowflake doily. Well, there's two things I say doilies. They call them table toppers now. They're not doilies. 
but I still call them doily. That's what my grandmother called them. That's what I've called them. Granny's influence is still pretty strong with this one. <laughs> um, okay, I'm looking for the thing. So, I started the pattern three or four times. I like the way it starts, but I don't like how it doesn't lay flat. It, it was super tight, super everything, and it just didn't lay flat. So, I decided I'm just going to wing it. I haven't done anything off the cuff in a long time. I have been following patterns here lately or some version of a pattern, you know, for a lot of things that I've made and <laughs> not necessarily my own. So I decided I was going to make a snowflake doily or tabletop. It's going to be big enough to go around on the round table. And then, yeah, so it is coming together. I have no idea. I don't write anything down. I just did it each round. I do it. If I like it, I keep it. If I don't, I rip it out and start over. So, um, I do like the larger, um, flat things and then some spaces and, um, uh, I'm going to, and it's kind of cattywampus right now, but when I block it, it won't be, um, I wish you could see it on my knee because it does actually lay flat. That's the thing. So, um, as I do it, it does lay flat and that's the one thing I don't like a ruffled doily. Um, it's just one of those things I've never really liked. It just messes with it. I want it to lay flat, especially on the top and it could be ruffled after I do the bottom. So I'm hoping that I have enough of this. I'm gonna make it as big as I can with this, just kind of doing whatever um and i'll go from there i just started um i guess this is a pack i have no idea the center is a v stitch and then i just did chain stitch and i don't remember how many then i in the chain stitch did double crochets with tips at the you know with spaces in between it looks like one two three four and then a space and then four in each chain and then went around the whole thing only leaving a space for each turn and did that again did that it looks like for two rows and then put some more chains in and then went around and just increased accordingly um, so that it is gonna and I'm on the second row I don't know that I'll do a third row. Yeah, I probably will because it's going to get bigger each time. So it probably, I don't know if I'll add anything into this or if I'll just keep going this way, but we'll see. It just, I don't know. It looks like a snowflake. I like it. And that's really all that matters. So it will be the Christmas table topper. If I have enough, I have decided I am going to, uh, make one and I'm going to have to have at least one to two skeins left if I am going to be able to do what I want to do because this is one full skein. That's all I've used is one skein and that thing is, you know, pretty good size. So, um, <clears throat> I'm going to make one to go into my plant at the office for Christmas. If I have enough, if not, I might find something else to do under my plant at the office. I don't know, but I've got these and I'm, I'm liking it. So no, I'm not using the pattern, but I am making a snowflake table topper out of it. Um, don't know that there's a lot of difference there, but that is what I've been working on crochet. You saw what I did in the dye pots. Um, let's see what else. There's a lot of things going on. I, I done a couple of things different. Let me look here. Totally hooked in the baskets, in the pots, on the wheel. I don't have anything in the fields. Okay. So, um, it's not really in the fields, but I, um, found this, uh, app 
online and I was struggling because some of the plants that I have now all have different watering schedules and so I was looking for something to just you know and they have an app for everything you guys I hate to say it but that's the way our life has gone is app. so I found this one called planta and all my tasks are complete but you do them by location um, and I have, um, I don't know if you can see, so, oh, I just tapped on it. So here's my, um, living room. There's the office. Here we can see, now I have three plants that are at the office. Um, one is a spider plant that is right in front of the window. And those are actual pictures I took of the office ones. Um, they have others in here, if I can get it to switch, there you go. That's not mine. That's not mine. You know, so um, I have my spider plant, and then you can find this is they called it Luna, um, but they it gives the definition of it. This is my one of my other plants. Oops, at the office, and it's actually three little plants in that thing, and then uh, I also have my one that. I also have one of these at the house. So I have put them on the watering schedule. It it has premium. I'm not paying for premium. I just need to remember which ones I water on which days. And I don't have my calendar at the office yet. So this one right here, I don't know if you can see, it tells you how many days in between waterings. Um, now you can do a fertilizing schedule and uh, there's a light thing to see if your plants getting enough light that's all on premium I'm not not doing that so and then I went ahead and put in all of my and I just kind of played with it these are all the ones that I have here at the house yes I have quite a few now there's a reason that I did this and it is because I added another baby this weekend to my repertoire Henry gave me that and yes, it's that exact one. And so I have a little baby aloe vera plant. And I am super proud. So, but I did put them all on. Um, if you remember, like a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago, I replanted some of the spider plants and, and just uh, put them all outside for some good sunshine. Um, that kind of stuff. And so... I thought, man, I need to get better at watering these guys because some of them will look really droopy. Some of them won't need water when I do it, but I'm doing them all. So I just do them all on the same day. And so, um, yeah, when I'm doing that, they don't look so healthy. So I am definitely going to try and water on their schedule and not mine. The other thing I have to do is go and get a spray bottle. I'm going to try and get that tonight. Um, To work because it also tells you which ones need to be misted. Um, so the one that I got from the office and I, I really don't know how to say the real name of them, but they are super cute. My one at the office is having three babies and that one's having two. So all of them are doing wonderful, but not everybody's that, took one from the office is let me see if I can get the name of this um Guzmania Guzmania anyway it's a tuft air plant and they're tropical and they require some mist um they like high humidity which is great for Oklahoma but when you got the air conditioners running not so much so I need to get a spray bottle for the office in here and mist all my plants. And I think that other, uh, what they call it, the something tree. I think it's tropical too. Um, I use, they have a list and you can search, you know, spider plant. That one, of course I knew. The rest of them, I just put in cactus and searched cactus till I found one that looked like mine. I know that's not very scientific, but it worked for me. 
And so this one right here, uh, Lusana, L-U-S-E-A-N-A, -A, is the tree. I named it Donna. That's my name for it. <laughs> they all have names, so I know exactly which plant I'm talking about. But anyway, that one is also tropical. I know you're getting the reflection. Anyway, there we go. There. Of course, get it where y'all can see. And then, of course, it doesn't want to do. Um, there we go. But I do believe it's tropical, too, and I think it would benefit from the moisture of a mist. And it's got a care schedule, and it's got info on all the plants. Like, um, you water the 11th, every 11th day, um, and this is that Luna. And it says that the top layer of soil should always be dry. You fertilize it every three weeks. Um, you mist it on the sixth day. It takes normal humidity. Clean the leaves every third month. And this is all the stuff, you know, it, it likes... It's in a partial sun, partial shade, you know, in the winter. It Ideal temperatures for it is 64 to 77 degrees. Well, we keep it 74 in the house, okay? Um, and in the winter, we don't go below 65, so it should be fine. Um, it's got all the information about the hardiness zone. Anytime that you click on it and you want it... Um, information it's got it it tells you all kinds of characteristics it so they have one that just cracks me up because um everyone that i've seen says um might be toxic it, it talks about toxicity to animals and it just gives you a warning it's that red one right there just gives you a warning saying oh don't trust this you know so i don't know who's doing their research you know and then it gives you like the scientific name and stuff of the plant. So it gives you a ton of information, uh, common problems, uh, common pests, the life cycle, leaves, dimensions. Um, and then it gives you articles on how to take care of it and stuff. So I, uh, I like it. I'm playing with it. Not necessarily something that I might keep. Like, you know, I talked about that crochet land. It was great if you're doing a business. I don't have time to sit and count my rows. I don't have time to put in, you know, click, start, stop. It's great if you have that consistent. But the way I crochet, I've always got it with me. And just grab my phone, turn it on, turn it off. Turn it. Just didn't work for me. And so I ended up not using that. It's a great app. But, and it's great if you're reselling. That's the thing is I'm not reselling. I'm not um, doing anything like that anymore. I do consignment only. And I just do what I want. <laughs> that sounded horrible. But anyway, so then the other thing that's happening in the barn stalls, not in the barn stalls. The ducks are in the barn stalls. We still have the two ducks. The coon got the one. But the other two are doing great. Um, but the, any, the other thing in the farmhouse is, um, RJ's other truck broke down. Uh, it was leaking water and then they found a hole in the radiator and it had just gradually gotten worse and worse and worse and he couldn't find the leak. So he finally picked the shop. It's going to cost me about, I think he said $1,100 to get it back. So this week I have stashed money and I am going to pick up the truck. So, uh, actually, I don't know if I'm going to go get it Saturday. RJ said if he could get a ride over, um, he's going to get it uh, before then. Um, it is not the good truck that we just bought. Okay. It is his other runaround work truck. It's dependable. It's not the prettiest, but it does okay. So, he's got an older truck and then he's got a rodeo truck. Right now, he's driving the rodeo truck for everything because his older truck, his everyday truck, is the one that broke down. So, anyway, uh, he's got that going on. And then the other thing, and I don't want to jinx it, but you know what? 
what will be will be. God is going to take care of it. And we have, uh, we bought that five horse slant trailer with the living quarters and stuff in it. And for the first year and a half, we used the fire out of that. Um, RJ hauled everywhere with it. Um, take the generator, you know, they would cowboy and, and, um, him and his friends would sleep in it. We got mattresses for the top part, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, then the last, probably eight, nine months to a year, we haven't used it. And the reason being is number one, the truck situation. It, we didn't have one big enough and then we didn't. Then when he got the trucks that the white truck and stuff, he didn't haul it because of fuel prices. Um, any given time, he's only taken two or three horses, so he's never maxed it out. Um, when he was on the road last year traveling a lot, he used it all the time. When they went to Texas and stuff, they'd take his and pull it down there, and they'd have little living quarters, and they'd have, you know, and that was great, but he's not going like that anymore. And so I told him, I said, instead of it sitting there depreciating, you know, we probably have gotten our use out of it, need to sell it. I just don't want to lose any money on it. You know, it is what it is. So um, he's found a buyer for it. And hopefully by the end of this week, it will be sold. So that is a good thing um, because that way it's not just sitting there. You know, it's great to have things if you use them, but if you don't use them, they're costing you money. Um, that trailer served its purpose for, you know, years, a couple of years. We pulled that thing hot and heavy and hard and, and, you know, we wore the tires out of it. I bought brand new tires when I got it and it needs new tires now. So, um, yeah, it, to me, I shouldn't have to pay to maintain something I'm not using. That's where you get into that. Um, it costs you money. So the trailer, if I keep it, I'm going to put new tires on it. It has to be resealed again. Um, it just has to be maintained and it, it's everyday stuff, you know, it's not huge, huge expenses, but if it's costing me a couple grand to keep that every year and I'm not using it, what's the point? Um, I know that sounds ridiculous because you might need it in the future. I asked RJ, I said, are you going to regret if I sell my trailer? He goes, I have a trailer, mom. He has his stock trailer that he uses all the time. The, my trailer with the living quarters and the inline tack and all of that, he's not really using anymore. And so it was great when they were rodeoing out of state. They didn't have to get a hotel room. That made the money right there. Okay. That was worth having it because every time they went to finals, um, they had to have two or three nights. You stayed, they rodeoed Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So Friday night, Saturday night, he had to have a hotel. If it was too far away and he couldn't get there by Friday, sometimes Thursday nights, he'd have Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So that's three nights of hotels. And no, they didn't stay in big fancy ones. Okay. But when we were staying and it was, you know, $70 a night, $80 a night, um, that adds up. And then you have your entry fees. So you've got all this in it and the gas to get there. Your horse stall that you have to rent your feet. When it comes to that, um, and you're traveling so far, those things rack up and you have to win enough back to come out to the good. That's why it's hard to make a living rodeoing. Um, and that's why I tend to help him a little bit more than I should probably. Um, now as an adult, he has seen that and he has started riding outside horses to make up costs and expenses and that kind of stuff. So, uh, it served its purpose. It cut out that motel bill and we could have the horses right there with us. We literally would camp at camp at uh, the fairgrounds, wherever it was. We'd just go in, set up, have the horses penned out there, feed water, 
they had their stall. They could go in the trailer at night. They could be out, you know, and we just pin off. Um, I had that little canopy thing that, you know, for shade for them. We made a 10 by 10 stall for shade. All that was great. Now, is he utilizing it? No. It's just sitting there, and literally the tires are getting worse, dry rotting, than if I was pulling it. And right now they're not good tires. I, I mean, we just have driven the fire out of that thing. So, um, it is time to get it gone. And hopefully she will come and purchase it this week. Or this coming up weekend. I'm not sure. She said it'd be later this week. I don't know. So anyway, we'll get the truck out of the shop. That'll be taken care of. Sell the trailer. That will be taken care of. Um, <clears throat> just everyday life. So, and it'll give RJ more room for parking. That thing is huge and takes up a lot of the parking in the farm. So he will have spots to park in. Um, yeah, because there's that half circle that we rocked and just for that trailer and with cars, you can pull in this away with that long trailer. You have to do it this way and it takes up the whole thing. So yeah, it is what it is, <laughs> which that doesn't bother us. You know, it, there's parking enough for us because we're not open to the public anymore. So that took care of that. But anyway, um, and I say we've had that thing. Let's see. We got it before COVID. Four years, three years, four years, maybe. Yeah, right in there. And, you know, for the last year, we haven't really pulled. I think he figured out the last time he took it was like nine months ago. And before that, it was months before that, before he took it. But when he first got it, that's all he did. Basically last summer, because he was hauling, going to everywhere, anywhere, Texas, Missouri, Arkansas, that kind of stuff. So it is what it is, but hopefully those things will work out in God's time. And uh, yeah. other than that, I am still working on these. I'm going to continue to work on this one. And this one, I still have the little blanket and I need to get my sweater done for winter. I really do. And I need to get my butt back in that one. So maybe I need to make myself accountable for finishing these projects. Um, but yeah, so I'm almost done with Christmas. I just have RJ's bag left to make. And um, so that's what a couple of these are for um, some of the ladies at work. Um, and then, yeah, I, I just I have to find something for a roommate. Yeah. Last year I did a, a crocheted blanket and that was great. I mean, we had just moved into the house. <laughs> we could always use blankets. Um, but yeah, I don't think that's going to cut it. I might actually purchase something that is needed. Um, put some more thought into it. Something very personal. I don't know. So I need the perfect gift. So far, I haven't found it. I'm going to keep looking though. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, actually two years we've been here two Christmases so we did the blanket and then last year I did the um, sweater the green sweater that I spun and made and yeah so I don't know <laughs> I was just thinking I could get it I could do a sweater and I thought I did that last year so it's been two years I'm losing track of time the older you get the more you kind of lose track of time so all right I'm gonna get off here I still gotta put on my face for work put on my shoes um and yeah, it is what it is, but hopefully this week things are going to line out and like I said, things are, are coming together and getting a little less stressful. Uh, it's taken, you know, two years of 
getting my life together. And RJ is starting to feel it too. You know, him and I haven't lived together in, in right at two years, two and a half years almost. Um, June, August, September. So two years and three months. So, and it just, him and I were joined at the hip and it just, it, it was time for him to grow up. And so, um, he doesn't need to live with his mama all his life. <laughs> but the farm is his thing. So um, he knows when I pass away, that farm will go to him, the land. Um, he can do what he wants, build a house, do whatever. But he's promised me he won't sell it. So, yep. Anyway, all right, I'm off of here. I will talk at y'all later. And, yeah, bye. <laughs> I don't even know how to end. Sorry. This one is like everywhere. So have a great day. Thanks for watching. Prayers and blessings to everybody.